I always thought the dynamic between me and Dustin was that we were different. That's what I liked about it. We were really different. He's like eight feet tall and a redneck and just a mess. And I'm, you know, handsome. And no, 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 no. No. But we came back to the curtain, and the crowd reactions were getting a little less for the brotherhood. Just a little less. We had a really hot run for a minute. And the chief brand officer of WWE said, why don't you paint your face like your brother? And she was only making a suggestion, but someone's face just... And there, there was nothing I could do at that point. It was... That's what he saw. I don't think he looked at it from my perspective in the slightest, and I think that's hard for anyone to just jump into your head and know that, oh, this is, you know, I, I did not want to do what Dustin does. Right. That, that to me, is a living hell. Um, he, that's what he does. It was a bizarre ask, but when I first got the concept art, because creative, ser whenever creative services gets on something with WWE, they're, they're, they intend to invest in it. So that makes you feel good. Um, so creative services is a department that's responsible for some of the greatest characters in WWE. They're artists and, um, and seamstresses and all this, and they make all this concept art. The first stuff I saw for Stardust was the coolest stuff ever, and it was right along the lines of the comic book villain. It was silver hair, uh, there was a star on my eye, there was like one contact. It looked a lot like Cable in the X-Men. Sure, sure. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be okay. Right. I'm going to be okay Because that's like, I get to do this, but it's still kind of badass. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I was like, oh, I can wear a bodysuit, and like, maybe I can like stop working out for a few weeks. Like, um, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be okay. Um, and then like every week he was like, well, this is what he picked, and this is what he picked. And it was like becoming more and more a carbon copy of Gold Dust. And um, there's pictures of it online. I don't think any of the, the boys posted them. At the last minute, I was supposed to have a mask, and the mask – look like a uh, black condom <laughs> on top of my head <laughs> and it was just terrifying and they made me go up to the production meeting room and stand there in this get up and i told like i lifted it up i said i cannot do this like yeah. I, this i cannot do and then it became well why don't you shave your head like uh, like dustin and i was like so i'm just gonna be like mini mini Dustin, right. you know, because Dustin's like 11 feet tall for whatever reason. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be like mini Dustin. And then, yeah, even I even had a fight at the very last minute. Well, I'd like to do silver and black. It's like, no, first gold and black. And I just, it just <laughs> got, Nothing. yeah, so all this fun, I'm going to tweet some of it out because it's, it will harm no one. And so some of this concept art was so cool and then it went away and uh, I tried slowly, slowly. What was the exit from WWE like? Was it this dramatic moment of you're giving this to me, I'm not taking it, I'm out of here? Is it, look guys, you know I've been fed up, I'm leaving. Like, what was the exit moment? It was rather dramatic um, because nobody quits. Right. They they fire you. Right. Nobody, nobody gets to quit WWE. Um, and I wasn't going to have that. They were going to keep me there whether it be out of respect for what I've done already or whether it just be out of respect for my dad. I was going to work there forever. And I am not one who just, I just, the paycheck just is not worth, it's not worth your happiness. It's not, uh, it was dramatic because everyone wanted to talk me down. And you get to a point, like I said, three to six months. When you say everybody wanted to talk you down, are you talking the wrestlers or are you talking the manager? The wrestlers, uh, the management, the, your closest uh, mentors, um, your friends, uh, they want to talk you down. And I just, I couldn't be talked down. Three to six months of legit planning the big, the great escape. And uh, I couldn't be talked down. The main thing I, I wanted to do to protect myself was I released my statement. And uh, I know some people don't like people who overshare. But it was important for fans of wrestling in general to know what's happening here. Um, because I was not going, you guys don't get to fire me. You guys don't get to fire me. I... Gave you everything. I get to be the one to sit. I get to fire you. You left WWE and you came to AEW. Um, when did you decide to leave WWE? Why did you decide to leave? And can you talk a little bit about the decision to kind of take a, go, go on your own? Okay, probably for the last four years. Um, a lot of people hate their jobs. And a lot of people love their jobs. And I, I love being in the... I love pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is... 
my first love. And for the past four years, you know, with WWE, it just, I kind of lost my passion because, let's face it, you're sitting in the back, you're not doing anything, and it's just really hard, it's frustrating when you have so much to give, but time is running out because you are getting older. And it sucks when you're not being picked and you're pitching these ideas to uh, the writers and the creative and to Vince and to whoever else will listen, but nothing happens. And it's like, oh, we'll just put you in a backstage segment, standing in the hall while Goldberg makes his fucking entrance. You know, okay, thanks, I appreciate that, but no thanks. I'd rather be doing something with substance on the show in a storyline. And whether I deserved it or not, I don't know, but that's what I wanted, that's what I desired, There's, that's where my passion was, and I lost that along the way. And I wanted out. It was it was hard to get out. It's like it's like if anybody has seen the movie Papillon, it's like prison. It really is. It's they took good it's one of the prisons that they take good care of you in, but I needed to go kinda do something else, man, because I'd been there for so long and they they have they had taken good care of me, but I needed to get out. I needed to get out and breathe and try to find my passion again. There's other things I want to do in life, you know, before it just ends, you know, because you never know. We take every day for granted, you know, tomorrow might not ever happen. There's acting I want to do. There's other things. There's teaching, uh, opening a wrestling school. There's all kinds of things that, that I have in my mind that I'm just creating constantly every, every single day. And to actually get out and to say, this is my last day with a company and for it to be done to where I could actually speak about it was a breath of fresh air. And this fell in my lap, AEW, with my brother, because let me tell you something, man. It's when you push for something so hard for so, so long, and they look you dead in the eye and they tell you that is not good enough to be on the big show. It fucking pissed me off. It pissed me off. It pissed me off because I knew in my heart of hearts they were wrong. They were wrong. This is not a new beginning for me in my career. I have done it all, literally. 30 years in the business. My legacy is intact. I am Dustin Rhodes. I'm getting older, they're getting younger and faster, but just like every arena that I go to, and I go do something very spectacular because I, I give my 110% every single time that I step in those ropes. They chant, you still got it. Well, I never lost it. So this isn't a new beginning for me. But it sounds to me like Cody is trying to put me out to pasture or something. Good luck with that, little brother. Good luck with that. I love my brother. I have always loved my brother. When you're a little kid and you're going to the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, and here he comes, tall, blonde, every woman in the place going absolutely nuts for him, I'd say at one point he was my hero. You know, there's this regular jilted and lazy trope commentators in wrestling will use. You'll hear them say, the prodigal son. And I have to wonder, I'm curious, who out there listening actually understands the morals and the implications in Luke 15, 11, in that parable. There's two brothers. One does everything right. One works very hard, tries to keep his family whole. The other goes abroad, whores about, and makes every conceivable wrong choice you could possibly make. But it's the first brother who is equally in the wrong because he has an expectancy 
from the Father for all his good deeds, and none of it mattered. The Father loved them the same. I've sat on enough couches telling my story to know which brother I am. I'm good with it. And this notion of brother versus brother, of, of natural versus nightmare, it's all very marketable, it's all very romantic, albeit not very accurate. What's accurate is that this match is generation versus generation. I am not here to kill Dustin Rhodes. I'm here to kill the Attitude Era. My entire lot, my whole class of peers, has been compared to these gilded late 90s through the early 2000s for over a decade, and it's an utter sham. Sure, you paved the roads for us, but gosh, you set the speed markers at 35 because you are terrified of any of us putting our foot down on the pedal. You mean to tell me some pissant bodybuilder making every match a no DQ, meandering around the crowd, throwing the jib cam at his opponent, compares with a Kenny Okada match? Or some brawl and panty spectacular can match up with what the women did last September 1st? Or even Dwayne, as electric as it was, rhyming and raising. Was it really better than what Punk said sitting on that stage? Listen, I am the least Rhodes of the Rhodes. But they gave me a pair of boots. I've got the basics. When you do something to death, when you ride something to death, that's literally what happens. When that animal can't go anymore and it falls out on the trail and you can feel the tension in its eyes and it's fluttered breaths of panic, and it knows it's going to die, and it wants to die. You don't just leave it, because you love it. You pull from the hip. You roll your fingers on the steel of the chamber. You pull the hammer back. You do not anticipate the recoil, and you blow it away. Like I said, I love my brother. I say this a lot. I'm, I'm very proud of my brother, Cody. He is just now coming into his own shoes. He hasn't filled them yet. Just like me, back in the day, I wanted to fill my dad's shoes, and I could never do that, but I didn't know that. I did not know that because I wasn't old enough to realize that. He's not old enough to realize that yet. You know, Cody, Cody was raised much differently than I was, and I was there for a lot of that, and I saw a lot of it, and how they were treated, as opposed to how, how I grew up. And to be quite frank with you, I think he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. There is a rift between us. I don't really know exactly what the problem is or what that rift actually is, but it's probably something to do with his upbringing, him being the younger brother, 16 years younger. And he sometimes, you know, makes it a, a point that, that that's my fault that I wasn't there for him. Well, I was there when he won two state championships in wrestling in high school. I was there for him whenever he needed. I was always there for my little brother. They're always saying that him and I have nothing in common. Well, I beg to differ on one thing in particular, and that's going out and getting something. That's leaving the nest and going out on your own and doing it. I left the nest. I left the Dustin Rhodes name to do something that was way before its time that shocked the world. I know everything there is to know about my little brother Cody and he is one egotistical son of a There's so many times that I've told him how proud I am of him how much I love him and how dad would be proud of him and everything that he's accomplished never not one time never has he said thanks man I really do value your opinion you're wonderful I love you to death no I don't get that from Cody do I think Cody's making a mistake having a match with me? I do. 
Cody is facing is reckoning. There has to be an end to it. So you're gonna get all of me. The world is gonna get all of me. Everything that I have, this is a fight that needs to end. You can tell a lot about a fight, gentlemen, by looking at the fighter's eyes. You, they tell their own story better than we ever could. As soon as the hairs on my, the back of my neck went down, right back up again. And the third man in the ring, the veteran, as good as there's ever been, with 42 years' experience, Earl Hebner. Crowd chanting Dusty, honoring their father Dusty Rhodes. But I don't know how Dusty would feel about seeing his two sons go out of He would this. be unsettled. Let me tell you how he'd feel. He wouldn't be, in his words, the best bookie. Yeah. Dustin's entire life, the American dream was the star. This brightest star ever in the family. They'll ever perhaps ever be in the family. And then he thought, well, when Dusty passed away, God bless him, that maybe Dustin get his time to shine. Nice back heel trip. But that didn't happen because his little brother, Cody, became a worldwide star. Cody with the advantage, two-time former Georgia State High School champion. 189-pound division, Jim, and Dustin was there to see him win. Whoa! And Dustin was there, too. A little bit of a callback there. Dustin Rhodes sent to the outside. Yeah. Cody. Keep an eye on this situation. Hitting the rough tope suicida. Taking Dustin off his feet, driving him down to the floor. Oh, now, Cody, Cody. directing traffic. Oh, Dustin! Oh. Nice move by Dustin. Cody went to the well once too often. Dustin countering. Oh! What the hell is that? Flipping sent on off the apron. Wow. The old timers pulled them all out here. Oh, hardly concur with that. Now, powerful Man. right hand. Right across the bridge of the nose. But I think this is a smart move. I mean, Jim, you've seen it. Slow it down. Dustin was getting a lot of momentum. Let Cody regroup. Oh! Brandy inserting herself. What the? Come on. Don't tell me it's going to degenerate to that. Get right to the and the right toe. to the ear. The, yeah, right to the, to the temple. Look like it wasn't the flat of the boot. It was the toe. There was some. There was some mustard on that one. When I first started in the wrestling business, the kick of the toe was illegal. By the way, keep the score there. Right hand. Boy, he's just as accurate a striker as has ever been. You know, Jim, you mentioned earlier about a hiatus, and you did Excalibur as well by Dustin Rhodes. Well, how about Cody Rhodes? He has not wrestled since uh, January, first January. He had knee surgery yes. on his meniscus. Oh. Cody, uh, Cody actually just. Just snuck off that middle turnbuckle pad. There you see the uh, evidence. And no, 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 no. Making, making Dustin Rhodes think twice about it. If he kicks Cody, he's kicking solid steel. Well, that's going up on eBay. Oh, oh my oh. God! Head first, face first into the, unex the exposed turnbuckle. Flesh and steel. You see what he hit. Brandy making an impact earlier with Awesome Kong on her side. Oh, Brandy with the spear on the floor, flinging her body at her brother-in-law. What kind of family is this, for God's sakes? <laughs> That's your sister-in-law. Sister-in-law, spearing brothers-in-law. Earl Hebner has seen enough, I hope. Pull the cord, Earl. Dallas Page, DDP, oh. a member of the Nightmare family. He'll take them back. Maybe they'll do a little yoga and settle her down. Oh, look at that. The oh. eye, that eyebrow of Dustin that was driven into that exposed turnbuckle. That's what I said. You know, there's no give. There's no protection. 
And the flash oh. loses when it fights Steele. Oh. And a straight right hand by Little Brother. And another unprotected right. The hands are down. And at some point here, gentlemen, whether the fans want to hear it or not, if Dustin can't defend himself, you got to protect the athlete. Dustin can't see. Did you oh see how God. he just wiped a torrent of blood out of his eyes and immediately was covered back up? Somewhat blinded, it would appear. He's weakening by the moment, and again, he's 50. And he hasn't wrestled in a long time. Oh. Do you see how Cody aligning those knuckles up? He's actually using the knuckle arrow. It's not a straight right hand. He is using the point of the knuckle to target that wound on Dustin Rhodes' head. Oh. He's, he, is, he is blinded. He is effectively blinded. Off there. Hard Irish whip into the corner. So. And then in his DNA. And Cody knows now he's in the driver's seat, obviously. He knows now that this much-anticipated battle between the two sons of Dusty Rhodes can be over at his beck and call, it would appear. Another hammer throw reversed this time by Dustin. Oh, again, blinded. He went for the wild swing. Oh! Herb stomp. Driving Dustin's face in. One, two. No! Dustin able to kick out. The amazing will to win, to oh. compete in this Another way. Runner. And if Cody doesn't miss anything big, this is going to be over sooner or later. Dustin ducks under. Oh. Power slam! The power slam. Going for it. He's going for it. He got a near fall. And Dustin What's the line? Figure four. Figure four. Tried and true. <laughs> Tested over time. And we can see it. Everybody in the building can see it. Dustin Rhodes is in the center of the ring. But can he see it? Does he know where he needs to oh, go to get straight. to the road? Dustin's trying to turn both men to their stomach, or he would gain the advantage and somewhat of a modified Indian death lock. Reverses the pressure. But big statement. Dustin's got to somehow reach down, find it, and turn his brother. And there he goes. Oh. There it is. They're taking the belt away. Oh! Atomic drop. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, my God. The woodshed's open. Is there a spank going to come? Good <laughs> Lord. Oh, the, the cheeks of wrath. Basically making Cody go out to the yard and cut his own switch. And, man, there's some time passed here. The red! Look here. Close, close, close. The old man is still in it. He's fighting his ass off. And if you notice, all of Dustin's attacks are just this instinct. The crowd is so respectful. They're on their feet. This is what you live for if you're a wrestling fan. A match like this that means so much as this. And you're singing live. He's up on the top. No man's land here, folks. Oh, oh Lord. Crashing and burning, suplexing. And now, will that move finally be Cody? Crossroads! Hook of the leg here! Oh my God, the kid gets out. This family battle. Knees to the face. And a low blow. Low blow. Disaster, Disaster kick. <laughs> right on the nose, right on the button. The low blow! Crossroads! The near leg One, is hooked. Shoulders two. are down here. Oh! And Dustin kicked out and miraculously of the crossroads applied perfectly by his little brother, Cody. And certainly not for the weak at heart, but headbutt. The headbutt for the puffy, cut up face. Throws again, the second one. Oh! Good grief. Well, that's, see, this is what kills me. Oh. And this is a grass where my heart strikes. It's come to this, right? Pulling every bit of emotion out of me because I've known these kids, these two men now, since they were children. And to see this and come to this is damn sure heartbreaking. Oh, oh 
no. Look out. Oh! Cody just planted Dustin on the back of his neck. Center of the Deal with ring. those necks. Dropping heads. There's evil intentions there. And there's, and there's, does it have to be now? Can this have a wrestling match? Beat somebody with a hole. With a Co wrestling hole. Cody just broke the count. He doesn't want to win with Dustin unable to answer the count of 10. Crossroads again! Hook of the leg! Far leg, leg grapevine. It is over. By God, it is over. What a wrestling match. As amazing as I've seen in decades. The winner of this match, the American Nightmare. So, although it is, I uh, just, you know, we really had enough, honestly. Cody could have just left. Now he's come back. Yeah, and I don't like that. That fells could be bad news. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't get to retire here. You don't get that. Because I got to ask you a favor. In front of God and the whole world. Before AEW was a thing. Before we filled this place up. It was me, it was Kenny, it was Matt, it was Nick, it was Tony. And I put my name on a piece of paper for our show next month in Jacksonville for Fight for the Fallen. You know what the match that I put my name down on? It was myself and a partner of my choosing. Against against what I think is the best tag team in the world, the Young Bucks. But Dustin, I don't need, I don't need a partner. I don't need, I don't need a friend. I need my older brother. <laughs> <laughs>